Welcome back to another Bit Heroes video. You are joining me. Just rolled out of bed, and we got a bunch of regen here to burn off. So I'm just going to show you guys how I typically do that, and kind of what it looks like on stream when I'm focusing on Bit Heroes. So the first thing I want to do is switch the runes around. So I've recently got good minor runes, so I want to take advantage of that and just maximize what I'm using experience and then what I'm using um, item find. I right now I don't actually need any items from Gauntlet, so we're just going to maximize my experience as I'm trying to get to level 400, um, which I think I should be able to do it uh, before the week is over. So that would be pretty cool to see. That's been a goal on my main account for quite a while, and that's what we've been chasing on stream as well. So now to cram in the most experience in a short amount of shortest amount of time, you can actually run level one trials or gauntlets or just whatever lowest level where you can one shot everything and you will get through there a lot faster. You get the same amount of experience per run, the same loot per run. The only difference is rank points on the leaderboard. Now that's not what I'm going for. I am still trying to play the, the leaderboard to get enough materials to keep making good familiar augments and things like that. Also, I've been chasing... Um, Chasing rune fragments to try to improve my major runes because that's probably the biggest flaw in my character. Now, another thing I've been working on and something I do while I'm doing big marathon bit heroes pushes is I've been putting together, or at least organizing, a Discord where you should be able to find all of my content easily enough. A lot of the infographics, once you're more familiar with the game, are, it's probably the quickest and easiest way to um, pull up bit heroes information. I think the videos are probably a little bit more. Um, aimed towards newer players, free-to-play players, um, so that things can be explained out for you a little bit better. But once you get more experience, that infographic, you click it, and boom, all your information's right there. Well, that same amount of information is probably overwhelming to newer players. But trying to kind of meet everybody. And um, personally, when I've been making these videos, I feel like I've been jumping around to the Wikipedia page, and then jumping to different discords, and then jumping in-game and out-of-game and whatnot. And so I just wanted to organize everything all in one place and it really didn't take that much time it's just again something I do while Bit Heroes is grinding away I had some really good responses to it also I want to throw a thank you to everybody that has helped contributed to a lot of the ones I got a ton of help on the Inferno Dimension uh, infographic that I put together and the tier 10 one that was awesome just watching the entire community come together and send in all of the <coughs> the new items they were discovering so that was pretty cool but uh, things to do in the future. Uh, we should be getting a Hallowed Expedition sometime in the future. I think that's going to come around at least once every tier, and so I think the last time we saw it was tier 9. So, we should be seeing that sometime soon. And if you've had really poor luck in this expedition, at least with another expedition on the foreseeable horizon, you'll get another swing at some great items and great, great familiars. But this one is wrapping up. I think I mentioned it previously that I had gotten basically everything that I was looking for out of the Inferno dimension. And I know a lot of people, it's like on one hand, a ton of my friends have great luck. They got everything, no problem. And on the other hand, a few have just literally gotten nothing. And that's kind of how the game goes. You know, RNG is, is a cruel mistress. But um, there's one of the, big, the best things about this game is that there's actually um, different different builds that are viable. One thing that Bit Heroes does a lot better than other games is usually in other games there's one viable build and then one secondary build that is a definite step down. At least in Bit Heroes you got options. You know, if you're talking about tank items, if you don't get the the tank staff, you can get the um, the new axe that gives you a bunch of damage reduction when shielded. So both are viable. You could argue which one's better than the other one or just you know, in which scenarios, but they're both going to be runnable, and no one's going to just not bring you to a group because you don't have the staff, for example. So, it's viable. Um, same thing with the tank ring. So, the twitch ring gives between 1 and 8% damage reduction, and if you get it, great, that's awesome, but if you don't get it, then you could still go for the world boss ring, and I would actually argue that the world boss ring is better. It just might be a little bit difficult to, to farm that. Um... When I do see friends get set items and mythic items, I always do like to give them a shout out. Uh, it's easy to actually miss your own mythic, mythic items and not notice that you got it. Especially things like schematics where they just kind of disappear. And I also like to tell people um, what they got so it's easier to find it. I almost think there's like a something to it that if you are not looking at the screen, that your chance of getting an item is a lot, um, a lot higher. It's like some. Uh, 
mis mysterious RNG force that just kind of governs how you get loot. Um, also, I think it kind of builds the community. You know, one of the big things about a game like this is the community is what you what you make of it. So, you know, I like when I get an item that a bunch of people are messaging me, telling me, "Hey, grats, all that." You know. Um, and I try to kind of share that with other people. Also, I've got a lot of lower level people on my friends list, and I feel like they they probably think I don't notice them, but I definitely do, <coughs> especially considering how um, how valuable those friend slots are. And so a lot of people actually kind of get taken aback when the guy that's carrying them is uh, is you know giving them a shout out when they get good loot. And then the same thing for the people that are carrying me. I mean, you've you've probably seen my raid team, or at least you'll see it a little bit later. Uh, I've got some massive carries on there, and and that's definitely help that I'm very thankful for. So I like to give them a shout out when they get new loot and kind of see what they're working on and see the different builds that these guys have been coming up with. It's been pretty cool. Um, we have seen some development as far as DPS builds. A lot of people are running the Merciless set, which is the new DPS set from Trials and Gauntlet. It has a spear, and the problem is that spear does a ton of damage, but it doesn't have a lot of multi-hit skills. I don't think it has any multi-hit skills, which means that you're not putting out as many pet procs, which means you're not putting out as much healing. And um, we've had a lot of difficulty, not so much in the raid, because the raid's toned down a little bit compared to the last raid. But in world boss, we're just not getting enough healing to keep keep up with the damage that some of the bosses come out. I'll do world boss a little bit later, but basically there's seven different world bosses, and there's one guy that just completely blasts the, the rearmost player. And I think he's got a zero SP skill that does... 274% damage to the rear player, and it's just a relentless just blast of just, usually it's the, the bait tank in the back, you're just getting pelted the entire time. Um, and I've been running a, a handful of heroic world bosses, so I know that experience firsthand. We did pretty well, uh, we've been doing a lot of guild groups going through world boss, and that's honestly one of my top goals with a guild was to be able to be in a guild that can do heroic world boss at the same tier with um, a pretty good win rate. And other than the, than the one world boss that I was talking about, the, the guy with the mustache, Macho, <coughs> other than him, we've been able to almost auto the entire thing. So that has been pretty cool. I don't think my focus is going to be on heroic world boss unless I'm helping other guildies out or if I just get invited to some massive, um, super strong carry group that can fly through there with a really good win, win percent. I think it's probably going to be better for me and also less time consuming and less frustrating to just farm um, hard because the item find difference is not that big. So in normal world boss, you don't have any item find bonus mod multiplier. You have 25% um, in hard and then 50% in Heroic, which isn't a massive jump. It's significant, but it's not massive. Um, and let's just show off some of those schematics that I've been talking about um, before I forget. So in the Inferno Dimension, you can get Zarlok. He is the mythic tank. He's really good, but since I can't, st it's unlikely that I'll ever be able to stable him because you need so many of these legendary guys that I'll probably end up doing Yemek sometime in the future instead. But he, I would say he's the best tank in game. It's just, again, he's difficult to stable because it takes so many materials and so many familiars. Um, Gugurum, he's from the Hollow Dimension. I will continue trying to work on Goog when the next expedition comes out. I'm just waiting on materials. Dr let's see, Dryonic. I just got him most recently. Got him on Regen. And um, he would actually be one of the best DPS slash healers in the game. The only problem is that his stamina is so high that he's just got a lot of wasted stats. Still viable. That 1 SP attack all skill would proc his um, his procking effect a lot. And he's also got dual strike, which is nice, but again, his stamina is super high. Yemek is probably the tank I would make because he comes with a free um, healing pet proc, and stabling him is actually pretty realistic, especially when you consider that you just need to get a bunch of yetis, which is doable, and you need to get a bunch of the expedition materials which is also doable. And he's also got a really good skill set too. Uh, his stamina is a little bit high for my taste, but on a familiar, that's basically what you're going to expect. Um, so when I do need a tank, Yemek is the one that I'd be going for. Uh, Gummy and Fatty come from the Gummy portal. I don't really anticipate using them. And then Raylib comes from the Raylib portal. And of course, Goblin can drop in any of the portals. And Goblin's probably really, really popular. I think part of the, the popularity of Goblin is that um, Goblin came out before Goog came out. And I actually think Goog would be better for more consistency for things like Trials and Gauntlets. He's got a little bit more stamina. He's got some attack all skills, and he can put out shielding 
per hit. So that'll be something in the future. Pobo is the epic tank I was talking about in some of the previous videos. I have him on my main account. I don't have him on my free-to-play account. And so I'm just hoping that I'll be able to get him through regen before the event is over. But if I'm not able to do it, I can actually get another tank in the Hallowed Expedition that is also viable for uh, free-to-play. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at... Uh, take a look at raid. So this is my raid team. I've been running them. I've mixed it up a little bit. Some people are juggling different pets and trying different DPS builds and this is what I found most most um, I found most consistent but I'm pretty much able to just run through raids on auto and not worry about anything. Um, as far as my own items this is the staff I was talking about so this is probably the best weapon in the game just based off the bonuses, but more importantly, the skills here. Um, and it's all because this one skill right here where I can heal another teammate. Um, this thing has saved world boss fights and is also pretty useful as far as PvP and just other content. Being able to heal someone else has made the difference in a couple fights. As far as this set, I think it's optimal for a bait character. Um, you can run it as a front tank, I just think it's more optimal for a character that's not getting hit a ton. But again, I've, I've run it as, at the front of my raid and not had any difficulty. But the third piece, the three piece proc, automatically prevent the first death upon your team. That has been massive in world boss. I think we were running with two earthen mites and we needed every bit of it, especially against that, the more difficult bosses. And then here is the twitch ring, so 1 to 8% damage reduction. Um, very happy with this thing, but hopefully before the tier is over, I do want to switch to the, the other world boss mythic ring and um, get something more consistent. Uh, as far as pets, I've got Sakura for my accessory and I've got Rug for my pet. I do have a, a bunch of materials that I've been accruing over the past couple months and I don't know if I want to upgrade these any further or if I want to switch from to a different, to, uh, to a different setup. And then uh, for my runes, this is probably the weakest part of my character. I'm just switching to whatever legendaries I get that are defensive and then I'm going to try to switch to damage reduction and hopefully that can happen. At a reasonable time frame for enchants, this is what you see. So, um, wasn't too difficult getting all new enchants just based on the amount of raids and things that I'm running lately. Um, ideally, I would have 1% damage reduction and some other defensive proc or maybe empower chance and just try to minimize the amount of speed that I get. I do run really low stamina, so you see me there, I'm like uh, 1039 which is pretty low. Most baits are going to run around 1200 stamina. It's just that my familiars have really low stamina and I want to have less than them. So fortunately I've been lucky enough that raids aren't a problem and I don't think it was really holding me back in world boss as well so I'm, I might stay around here or I might bump up by 100 stats. We shall see at least for stamina. Uh, like I said I'm trying to chase and get to level 400. Um, most of that is just getting my total stats up and just trying to get a little bit stronger so I can help out more in world boss and things like that. My secondary goal is to change up my familiars and that's part of the reason why I've been running so much world boss is to switch to eventually doing all Melborgs and I'll make some cool videos out of that but they have a really fun skill set and based on the augments that I have I think that's going to be a really fun team to run. Um, I do think it's going to be pretty interesting in the future, you know, this is tier 10, but in tier 11 or tier 12, when those world boss familiars get more common, um, what PvP is going to look like and what everybody's going to be running is going to be pretty interesting. Um, I still think that the expedition familiars are going to be popular mainly because they have that free brain proccing effect. That's a lot easier to get than to to get it out of the gem shop. I'd actually argue if you count up the number of gems it takes to get the brain proc that you want versus how many gems it takes to get the schematic that you want, um, you're probably better off farming Expedition when it is available, but RNG is going to do what RNG does. Um, other things for the channel, so I need to do two more flags on my free-to-play account to finish off the Echelon Zone. And I think I'll be able to do that, at least when the, this Expedition's over, I can make the Woost uh, schematic and I think that'll be enough to I think that'll be enough to get through at least one more flag um, hopefully I'll get Pobo before this whole thing's said and done and, and that would be pretty awesome I have enough familiars farm to make Woost the healer and uh, pretty soon I'll have enough familiars to make Pobo and I might even be able to stable him right out of the gate we shall see but this is the final boss for the raid um, I did get the Forbun schematic and I may end up making Forbun just because I have the materials, but 
like I've said in the past, if you can't stable the familiar, um, the chance of you benefiting from using that familiar is, is much less unless they're an expedition familiar. But hopefully I can stay alive and not die. I don't think my set proc went off, so I've still got a, a revive ready for my team to go. I still don't think any of the familiars in Raid 7 are worth worrying about, but it is possible that um, some of these guys in the future, like we just saw here, the tank, might be worth having. Um, still nothing that I would throw gems at, and uh, no way to tell if the goblin in the future will go into some interesting schematic, but um, as it stands right now, nothing interesting in, in Raid 7 for familiars. Now, I I finally got the minor runes that I want, so I'm, I'm always going to try to maximize them. And before I go into World Boss, since you're barely getting any experience from here, you're getting about, I think, one-tenth of the experience you would get from running a dungeon or something like that. Um, I always try to maximize item find. And one way to help your group fill it faster is if you do spam it in World Chat, and so that's what we're seeing there. As far as running World Boss 10 on Heroic, you only really need one player. Um, you need a strong tank, so somebody that's in Tier 10 gear like myself, and then honestly, um, anything that is Tier 9 or above will probably be fine to fill the rest of the slots. You, I've even done it solo, and I've done it with um, groups of two, groups of three, things like that but you won't be successful but you might just not be successful on all of the world boss individual bosses uh ray loop schematic like we talked about um not that valuable for to make i mean it would be fun in, in like pvp or something like that but nothing that i'll actually aim to get he of course comes from the ray loop portal so it looks like idiotic is trying to farm the staff that's uh, what's most likely here but like i said He'll be fun in PvP because he's got a um, a really fast attack, he's got dual strike, and he's got a 1 SP single target skill, which is really good for snipe, so that would make him pretty good for PvP. It's just not, um, not worth farming a bunch of Raid 2 bosses to try to stable him enough to make him viable. And then, while he'd be useful in PvP, he wouldn't be useful in PvE, so that's a very niche option there. But, anyways, like we mentioned before, I think I'll be spending a lot of my time doing the hard world bosses just to get the item find bonus. I could solo normal, but since it's easy enough to get groups and they go fast enough here, and um, I also like to try to help and carry anybody who is um, high enough to run this. Maybe they'll get lucky, and that'll be pretty motivating for me to see somebody else get... Um, at least someone else gets some loot in here. Pretty interesting build. He's tier 10 some of the Arsenal set. Um, I like Arsenal. I actually think Arsenal would be a, a better choice because it has Ricochet and, and the the gun here has a good um, attack 5 skill, which is good for proccing the pet. His build's pretty interesting though. He's got a trophy on there, so maybe he's switching from tank to DPS or vice versa. Or maybe he's doing some sort of a hybrid situation. Or maybe what we will see. Uh, Shaw's is back. He's a pretty good tank, and there you go. For World Boss composition, uh, tank in the front, tank in the back. One of them being a bait, and then you're you're pretty much good to go. Two B two DPSs in the middle. Um, for this World Boss, the red one, he has attack weakest skills, I believe, and I know he's got an execute bonus. So if someone has less than 25 or 30 percent health, he will do 25 percent more damage, and this makes my staff healing skill more valuable to top anybody off as, as they are starting to get low. World boss is pretty fun. There's seven individual enemies that you can fight here and you can basically see them in any combination. And then there is a mythic schematic which is a really good DPS uh, familiar. Might be the best DPS in the game, but that's debatable. Either him or X5 in the Hallowed Expedition. But we'll talk about that guy if we ever get to making him. And so another world boss is going down. Ooh, uh, enchant. We'll take a look at enchants a little bit later, um, probably towards the end of the video. Taking a look at this guy, so he's got a tanky block build. Um, for hard, it doesn't really matter who is where. I would put somebody tanky in the back slot just to be safe, and, and some of these enemies have attack further skills, but not too difficult if you've got tier 9 stuff to, to get a group in here. You don't even really need to have a set bonus, but it, it does help. This is the blue guy. He is Melvu. He is a block familiar, and he also gives 4% damage boost to anyone behind him. So, 
he might actually be interesting to run as far as a tank in the future. Let's say, you know, really far down the road when I've finished off Melborgs. Um, he might be pretty interesting. What I'd like to do is put together a full familiar raid team to see if I can run Raid 7 Heroic um, all by myself. I know some other people have done it before with all familiars. Um, pretty recently, I know at least three people that have done it. But it'd still be pretty fun to make a video for. And let's see, so he's the same guy with Arsenal. Yeah, let's just get started. Who do we get? We get another one. We get another uh, Malvu. Now, the guy wearing the belt with the the hair and the mustache is... Uh, what is he? M Macho, M Mad Dog, Melly Macho Man. When Macho is the, the boss here, he is the one that will blast your team apart, and he's the most difficult one to beat. We beat him a couple times, but our, our win rate against him is definitely less than 50%, and that's just because he does massive attacks to the rearmost enemy. And he would be pretty interesting, as far as a familiar, I know one of my friends wants to make him and run him as a front tank. His bonus is that he gives increased damage, I think 4% to um, anybody on his team in front and behind him, but... Um, only the ones adjacent. So if he's right in the middle, only the one guy in front and the one guy in back are going to get the damage bonus and not the entire team. Or at least that's how that ability or that bonus has worked out um, on previous items that had it. So here we go. We're doing a couple more and hopefully we'll see some of the other bosses so I can talk about them. But like I was saying with Raylib, not worth making, but he, he would be interesting to have. Um, it's just not worth the effort of going out and getting him. Now, if you happen to have seven world bosses from, or excuse me, seven raid two bosses, then yeah, you know, knock yourself out, make them, and then let me know how your results go. But I would prefer to have something that is good in PvP and good elsewhere. Um, and it's, it would probably just be easier to make Korgs, anyways. Let's see what this guy is running. So he's got a mix of Arsenal and the Earthen Might set. So he's probably tearing up see what everybody else is hunting for here. World Boss is a good way to get legendary items. So if your only goal is legendaries, you can either convert your energy to raid shards, which is something that I do on my free-to-play account in the top right, or you can run World Boss. It's kind of one or the other. And I've actually considered doing that to pile level my free-to-play account by just dragging him along in World Bosses. I could probably carry him through at least hard. Um, and try to increase his chance of getting items, but it's, I haven't done that so far. And in fact, my, my free-to-play account, I only even run him through raid 6 hard. I don't even do heroic on him, which also shows that if you're a free-to-play character and you don't have a really strong raid team, you can still progress through the zone without any problem. I mean, we're, we're two flags away from finishing out his tier. Um, our, raid 6 is very RNG heavy, and so a lot of people actually report they have a harder time in raid 6 than they do in raid 7 with the same team setup. So I will be pretty happy when I can get my, my free-to-play account out of there. Uh, still working on that Pobo schematic, but that would be pretty ideal. I think he'd, he'd be good to go. I would just chase an epic accessory and pet on him, and I'd be pretty happy with that. I think if you set different goals as a free-to-play player, you'll enjoy the game a whole lot more. Let's see what this guy's build is. It's just random stuff. Okay. Yeah, ooh, he left. I would actually I would have kept him. Uh, let's see. Oh, failed the uh, familiar here. Yeah, um, ideally I prefer people be over 4,000 total stats, but honestly, world boss 10 hard is not that difficult, and this guy will be able to come along without any problem. Okay, this is Melborg. So he is the guy that I've been hunting. If you make the familiars and they're on your team, they will be in the small version. I actually went against somebody who had Mervlin, the little um, guy with the beard here. Yeah, I want to get him in PvP, and so if they're on your team, you'll, they'll be a small version. They won't be the big version that you see here. And the cool thing about Melborg is that he's got the—he's essentially got the gun from the Arsenal set, where it is a—he's got a, one SP skill where he attacks a random enemy once, and then four attacks go to other random enemies. And that's different than an attack all skill because if there's only two enemies or three enemies remaining, all of those remaining attacks still hit. They just kind of bounce around and hit random targets. But if you had an attack all skill, you'd only get two or three hits out of the, the skill. Hopefully that made sense. Let's keep going here. Uh, the bomber, his uh, his mount skill went off for almost 30k. So pretty cool. I do like those damaging mount skills. 
Um, I run the Michel mount, which is a heal self, and because my stamina is so low, I end up just overhealing and never using it anyways. And ideally, I would like to switch to a mount that has no agility and 4% damage reduction with a damaging skill would be ideal, but it's, it's a little bit lower on the list as far as things for me to upgrade. I have been stacking my mount guts as far as the crafting material because I actually still think that the ancient item that we're going to get in the current zone is going to be an ancient mount, but that dungeon has not been released yet. So we shall see. Let's see what YPS is running. Oh, he's got the Agony set. This is from uh, World Boss Orlag Tier 8. And you and nearby teammates gain 3% increased damage. So like I was talking about with Macho Man, um, nearby teammates means the guy in front of you and the guy behind you. So that is pretty cool. Um, he's also got the Peppermint Ring, which has a similar effect. And then he's also got the... Um, the Melvin cloak, which is the, which has the same effect. So this guy has a pretty interesting build. Um, it is a crossbow for the weapon of this set, and that crossbow has an attack all skill. I still think that the arsenal gun attacks are better. You know, if you're going against five enemies or if you're going against six enemies, attack all is better because you're getting five or six hits. But if you are going against five or less enemies, you you're still going to get five hits out of the um, out of that gun skill that I was talking about. The only problem is if you go against one enemy when you're down to the final boss, um, you, you'll only get one hit out of that skill, but you can just use a different skill. Uh, let's see. See what he says about his build. That's pretty awesome. This is the, the second guy that I've seen with Agony in Tier 10, and that's pretty cool. Um, here are the skills that we talked about. So that's the 1 SP attack all skill. It's still really good. I just think the gun would be a little bit better here. And I can't remember who has it, but somebody has half Arsenal and then half Agony, and they're doing it with the um, with with a Star Weave build. So that's pretty cool. All right, this is the red guy again. He attacks the um, he will attack the weakest, and he will also have an execute skill. So this would be a pretty good time to show off um, my staff healing and try to keep everybody topped up, nice and full. The, Obli the Oblivion Staff. Um, I think it took me 35 plaques to farm it out of out of Inferno, and I did all of that with a 250% boost, and it took a good amount of time to farm that. And then it took me 15 more plaques to get the, the Twitch Ring. So, pretty sizable amount of farm that it took to get these items, and nothing I would... I wouldn't expect to get these with anything less. So here is one of the mythic materials and that's what you use to craft the familiars that come from world boss I still think that's a really cool build though it's it's unique I haven't seen anybody else run it um, just a combination of the agony set peppermint ring and Melvin cloak that is pretty cool I wonder what uh, what he does for familiars though it's just so if you're the DPS player then you probably have a tank in front of you and maybe a tank behind you so are you getting that much out of your build as far as um, as far as your own PvE? I don't know. And the thing with raids is that raids are easy enough that if you have a full tier 10 group, you're just going to be flying through there maybe with a couple potions if you need it. So it just comes down to world boss. So another Melborg here. Um, the zombie looking guy is Melson or Nelson. He attacks random and so he can be a little bit troublesome if you're doing heroic world boss um, you just want to have at least two tanks in there with good redirect to try to pull those hits off of your dps players the bonus on melson is um, he deals 10 percent more damage and takes 10 percent less or takes 10 percent more damage as well and so pretty glassy and a good amount of speed on him too because he's, he's going to hit a lot um, if you can't see how much energy you have left if it's obstructed you can hit that little plus sign next to your energy down there and you get a, a better idea of that so I can do at least three more runs come on bit heroes there we go so DPS is you weren't any tier 10? no it's all tier 9 but yeah tier 9 and tier nine is fine here and then flash catch him but this is typically how I do it run through um, both accounts at the same time it is kind of nice to have two accounts here though, so I can look things up and, and see what these builds are. Um, this Rendar pet actually was a PvP reward that we got a while back. That's kind of cool. And then he's rocking the Tier 8 tank set that he's got up to, what, Tier 9? 
So, pretty cool. I'm not a big fan of that set. I had a couple friends that had it, and they complained about it so much that it kind of um, it kind of put me off a little bit. And it, it does give less damage reduction, but still still viable. It's still, still something you can run. I just wouldn't put the effort into up tiering it. Uh, let's see, have we talked about all these guys? So yeah, so this is Melson. He can attack random. He can do a good amount of damage. And so hopefully this guy here will wake up and uh, and, and keep clicking them skills, man. My only peeve about doing public groups is when somebody when somebody just kind of AFKs and doesn't play their turn. I feel like what it should be, you have 10 seconds to click your skill, and I feel like the one change they should make is that if you don't click your skill within that time, it should flip you to auto. I think that would be ideal. Because waiting for 10 seconds once on somebody who's lagging behind, yeah, that's no big deal. But if, if it's every round like that, that's why people don't like World Boss. And it can slow down things a little bit, but not that big of a deal here. Let's try to see if I can keep everybody alive through all this. So not only does Melson have his own damage bonus, but right now since Macho is behind him, Macho's buffing both of these guys by, I think, 4%. And so the damage output here is significant, and this is only on hard. This is one of the fights that probably would have killed me if I was solo. And if you do solo this, even if you are strong enough to do it, it just takes so long. You'll be in here for like a couple minutes each run. So by doing these public groups, I'm able to speed it up, increase my success rate, and um, help some people hopefully get some gear. It will be kind of nice to see somebody get a drop while we're in here. Um, other things I'm working on, the Discord here. Uh, sometime in the near future, I'll probably make the link public as just a way to organize things better. I want it to be a really good archive that is better than the Wikipedia that you can also comment to and, and kind of use as a community. But I don't want it to be something where I just throw a bunch of videos up there um, and make it like a video archive because I feel like that would probably be a little bit annoying. But it is a good kind of notepad for me to write down some things or put some graphics together while I'm saving them and trying to prep for uh, different videos and things like that. Also, probably the easiest way for people to send me in uh, pictures. A lot of people have sent me in um, schematics and content and things like that that I've been able to use in videos. And this would probably be a better way to organize it all. So, work in progress, but it is coming along. Um, speaking of work in progress, just watching my old videos without any editing and without the resolution and the cropping. And oh my goodness, that's some, some pretty rough stuff. Um, as far as the channel here, I will continue doing Bit Heroes videos. I will also continue um, covering some other games as well that are coming up. I've been having a ton of fun in Sekiro. Most of that's been on stream, but I do want to put up a Let's Play that goes from start to finish, or maybe at least some boss fights or things like that. Um, a couple people were helping me out clipping um, boss fight kills. I think I, I one-shot two different bosses, and uh, I was pretty proud about that, considering how much trouble I had on those guys previously. So that's always nice when you can do that on stream or just share it here on YouTube. Um, but Sekiro's been taking up most of my time. And uh, Chaos Bane is going to be going into another beta soon here too, which will be pretty fun. And you can see those channels there as well. But we've got the red guy. He also at he attacks uh, the weakest enemy. And I think I've covered almost all of the, uh, the world boss enemies. Um, the guy with the rock, he is, I think, a deflect... Yeah, he's a deflect tank, um, and I think teammates behind him take 4% less damage, so it's kind of like the obliteration, um, the oblit tank buff. And here we go. Let's finish this guy off. Boom. Oh, world boss, why do you not give any loot? We can do one more run. Last one here. I think he was tanky, so we should... If nobody joins in, in a couple seconds, uh, or nobody rejoins, then uh, we'll probably just run it on a duo and see if we can handle it. Although, knowing my luck, I'll probably get a really difficult fight. So there you go. Free-to-play character is super close to um, finishing the zone. I'll be really happy when he's in Tier 10. Uh, getting that Pobo schematic would probably be the biggest thing for him. But if that doesn't happen, I'll just farm for Winsler when Hallowed comes out. I'm thinking that um, after uh, after this what is it? After this Inferno expedition, we'll probably have a week without any badge events and then I think the following week will actually be a GVG event. I hope we just go straight to the next event. That would be ideal for me. But I'm thinking it's possible that they'll spread out the content. Okay, this is Mervlin 
So Mervlin is a really good familiar. He's got an attack all skill. He can heal. And his bonus is that he um, has a chance to not spend SP. So he's going to get a ton of bonuses. He's also doing 4% increased damage because he's got the blue guy in front of him and he's taking 4% decreased damage because he's got the rock guy Geove in front of him. So this one might be a little bit tricky. But it does let me show off the staff skills I was talking about earlier in case I need to heal my buddy here or shield myself. Um, these these fights, if I was solo or in you know like a two-person team here, these fights do take a little bit longer. And the best way is to save up SP by just spamming one. And then when you're ready, just I'm using my attack weakest skill to try to take down this guy and burst him as much as possible. Um, I do want to keep my friend nice and healthy here, so I'm going to use that healing skill. That was a big heal. Um, just to keep our DPS up. And... This is a fight where if I was solo, because Mervlin can do so much healing, I don't know if I would actually be able to um, be able to take him out on my own. So we shall see. My total stats are around 5350, and I want to boost that up a good bit. My goal before the tier is over to get um, 5.5 thousand total stats and try to break away from the the general pack a little bit because I feel that um, most players, if they are uh, fully tier 10 gear, they're going to be around 3.5, and anything that I can do to kind of sprint ahead of the pack would set me apart and help me help out other people. Um, I've been really interested in the familiars, but I always have to kind of remind myself that it, improving my familiars helps me, but it doesn't help anybody on my friends list or anybody in the guild when we start thinking about GVG and stuff like that. So, there you go. That is a world boss. And switch these runes back to experience like I'm talking about. I still think that I can hit level 400 by the end of the week, which isn't too difficult. I mean, we just saw Dan hit 700, and I think Bike is right behind him. So those are crazy pushes. I think you're up in like the trillions of experience to go that far. So there you go. Yep, that is uh, all the loot that I got in tier 10. I got the world boss set ring. I was open for the mythic ring, but I mean, hey, any drop I'll take from world boss. And if you don't, a lot of times, like uh, lower level players will wonder what they do with all the materials. You take the green ones, you convert them to blue ones, you take the blue ones, convert them to red ones, and then you can use these to roll uh, enchants. And with your PvP coins, when you get 10 of the gold ones, you can upgrade those and get a skill point. And let's see, at this weekly reset, I should be able to roll for another augment. So that should be pretty good. I'm hoping that I'll be able to roll for another uh, major rune. And let's see. I actually got um, this legendary like a week ago in raids. So I might actually switch to using that one. This is what I'm using right now on the welcome. And that is on my Goog. And that is on Stratos. And I use him sometimes. I just got this one. And since it's a duplicate of the legendary, I will end up, <coughs> I will end up grinding it up and, and uh, using the materials in the future. We got some of these enchants. So let's take a look. So dual strike. Not too interested in that. So... We'll Reroll that and see. Block chance, but it's got a lot of speed. Probably going to end up just salvaging that. Dual strike and a lot of speed. I don't anticipate... Uh, health is not helping me. I don't anticipate going DPS anytime soon, but uh, that's actually really good for DPS. But if I do go DPS, you know, an enchant like that with dual bonuses is going to be the best thing. You want to spread out those bonuses because they're multipliers if you do go DPS. Let's see what else here. I'm going to roll all the, the ones that have been rolled twice. <clears throat> and then when it costs 90 materials, I'm just going to grind them up if, if it's something I'm not going to use. At least that's how I do mine. Damage and dual strikes, so that's really good for a DPS. I'll keep that. Damage and health, I'm not going to use this. So let's reroll it a second time. Damage and rage and absorb. That's interesting. That's interesting. I think ideal for me would be damage and rage and absorb. That would be ideal. But let's see. Damage and health. So... That one's been upgraded twice, and so I'm going to salvage that. I've been getting enchants often enough that... Uh, and I'm also always low on the epic materials. So I only roll them twice, and then I get rid of them. But, you know, your your mileage might vary. Damage reduction and dual strike. Eh, is that better than this one? Is that the same thing? Hmm. Dual strike is almost useless on a tank, but it is better than nothing. And these ones, these are pretty good. I'm going to stick with these. Hmm. I'll hang on to it for now. 
Let's see, let's see. Power and speed, that's really good for DPS. Absorb and reduction, we just saw that one. It would be nice if they organized this in some way that was a little bit easier to view, but... Hmm. I might actually have to switch to that. Uh, empower chance, let's switch that. Block and health, nope. So let's crush that. Damage reduction, but it's got speed. So I'm, I'm not going to use this one because I do have better ones. Damage and rage, nope. That's not what we're looking for. Damage range absorb. Hmm. Will I ever use it? I'll just save it. Damage and rage. I'll re-roll that eventually. I'm just gonna add a materials now. Damage reduction lifesteal. Too much speed on that one. Uh evade chance and dual strike. I'll probably re-roll those later. When I get more materials. So there you go. Might not be the most exciting part of the video, but I do want to kind of show um, the thought process that, that goes through when I start looking at things like end chance and hopefully a answer some of those questions before they start popping up on me. But that will do it. Um, I'll just run through these raids as we close it out. Again, on my free to play, I got the Woo schematic, so I'm, I'm really happy with that. I've got enough familiars and materials that I'll be able to make him when he expedition is over and then each time you go through the expedition you get 150 materials um, just basically for showing up so next time it comes out I'll be able to get three of him and then so on so you know in the future long long enough down the road I will be able to get a bunch of him and he'd be good I'd be happy to run a bunch of him in PvP and PvE so that is hands down the best epic DPS slash healer in the game right now, so it's a pretty good spot. I'm still working on uh, still working on Pobo, and these little cacti here are called Poke. These are the familiars that go into Pobo. This is also the dungeon that will give you Scorpius to make Scort, and I wouldn't mind picking up a fifth Scorpius here, just in case I need to plus five him or just have him as a, a backup tank. Um, that way I'm not in a bad position if I don't end up getting the Poke. And like I mentioned before, Winsler comes out in the Hallowed Expedition. He's a, a d damage reduction version of the same tank, so he'd be doable. Doesn't look as cool, but uh, no complaints. He'd definitely be a big improvement there. Anyways, that'll do it for this video. Let me know how you guys feel about the Let's Play or the longer version of the videos. I've had some people ask me to do longer videos. Um, and surprisingly enough, the longer videos actually take a lot less time than the smaller videos to make. To crunch everything down into a two-minute or a six-minute guide video when um, I'm doing overlays and different things and doing a lot of research and putting these um, infographics together takes a lot more time than just doing a Let's Play like this. And maybe this is a little bit more natural as far as um, explaining things and kind of showing thought process as far as raids and gearing and, and strategy and stuff like that. But let me know what you think. I don't think I'm going to be doing away with the, the smaller guide videos. That way those videos kind of stand the, the test of time a little bit better. And it's easier for someone to kind of search and look through and find quick information. And then if you really like the con most condensed information with those um, infographic videos, um, eventually I'll make the, the Discord link available where you can just join there, click everything. It's organized for you. And it's a little bit more visually pleasing than the Wikipedia. But anyways... I appreciate you guys for watching. As always, I'll see you in the next one.